Hey there, good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Bridget, live here on News 6 Plus and ClickOrlando.com. I'm Bridget Ellison. Good to be with you on this Thursday, July 18th. We also call it Friday Eve, and this week seems to be going by pretty fast. Maybe it's because the weather kind of seems almost the same every day. I don't know, but we're going to get a check of that weather and that traffic coming up. We also are remembering Pat Williams this morning, an icon and pillar in Orlando and Central Florida, co-founder of the Orlando Magic and much more. We're also going to take a look back at night three of the RNC in Milwaukee and talk about some other local issues affecting us. That's still ahead, but First, let's get a check of that pinpoint weather. And Chief Meteorologist Candace Campos is over in the Pinpoint Weather Center. Candace, just as predicted, you said that it would not rain on our little goat baby goat party last night, and it Yay! was perfect. Other yes. than some huge mosquito bites on Mama, but and your allergies are acting up. <laughs> yes, literal yeah, there's hay a lot of hay. fever. Yeah, there's a I, lot. I love the moment. I'm just going to show you really quickly. I haven't posted this, but when the goats it, run out, it is just the best Hold thing. on, let me see. Can you see it? Here they come. And my kids went crazy for it, and they fed. One baby was named Walnut, and the other baby was named uh, Tiana. I don't know why I'm so bad at holding up this phone to the camera, but anyway, I, I, will, I will post something later. But Oh, there's Tiana. Hey, Tiana. Oh, my gosh. And they drink their little bottled milk so fast. And it was so sweet because they kept saying, oh, Tiana was born on the 10th. She's not going to finish her whole bottle. So why did Tiana finish the whole bottle? <laughs> look at her. She did so finish sweet. it, you said? Yeah, she's like barely a week old. Born oh, on the 10th. Look she is. She's tiny. So they had like oh two sets God. of triplet baby goats out there and – Pigs, chickens, oh. roosters, when turkeys. They, when they run out, it's so cute. It and is. then did they show you when they feed them back back in their little thing? They all go around a circle and then they spin when they eat. Have you did you see that? I didn't see that part. Yeah, so sometimes when they feed them a little later on in the day, they put the food in the bowl. Yeah. And then they all come around to the same little round bowl and then one starts moving and they basically just it's like a little rotation. They just rotate. Oh, and then every once in a while the chain they'll they'll alternate on certain days. It's just oh, so my funny. Goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back for um the um they have an adult thing on Fridays. So Yeah, they have like a parent. Kathy like a parent and I are talking out. about that. Yeah, we we might go out to that. So I'll join you that way. I'll okay. join that before I do yoga. Yeah. I know that. Although. But you, I heard you had fun on Amazon Prime Day. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be a big time rower. <laughs> I want to see this. I like to row. I like rowing machines. That's a good workout. Well, you know, this schedule really doesn't allow for too much. Like, the traffic doesn't allow for too much either. Well, not, well, not too. But the problem is, is I am not somebody who is very good at like, going to the gym and knowing what things to use and what mm -hmm. weights to use. I'm a class girl. Get me to hey, class and we do a Let me send you minute. the link for class pass so I can get my, my extra points. Okay, fine. You I'll can pick any class you classes, want. Yeah, but a lot of these classes are in, aren't in the middle of the day. They're either like in the morning, lunchtime, or then in the late we'll afternoon. We'll talk after the stream. Okay, fine. I know you you have mastered it. You've been doing this a lot longer and you get to those classes. But anyway, okay. I got the, 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 I almost said lawnmower, the rower. <laughs> um, I don't know. We'll see. So was we'll it see. easy to put together? Oh, I don't have it yet. Oh, oh, okay. It's on the way. But it does, it does, it does fold because, you know, space is limited in the house. And, uh, that's so a good option. We'll Save you time from driving, gas, traffic. Well, Trooper Steve doesn't want really to do anything, so he's gonna have to. He's gonna connect our Apple watches to make sure that I'm okay. Working out. That you doing close your circles. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Blah blah blah. Listen, as long as I can watch a little something on on it, it has a little spot for your iPad or your phone. Nice. Like you watch my watch my documentaries. You say it was like two fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was on sale. That's that's low for a machine, like a whole. And machine. I also look at all the reviews. I do a lot of my research. I go on YouTube and stuff. So. If anybody has a good like rowing program that they like to go, like let me know. Hit mm -hmm. me up on Facebook. Anyway, I'm gonna be so built. <laughs> so gonna not. just yeah. put a hurting on that clicker. 
Yeah, look at that. Yeah, all right, let's talk about your weather forecast before I embarrass myself anymore. Um, listen, less rain, more heat is in the forecast. The other reason why I got a rowing machine is because I can do exercises indoors because it is going to be hot. It's going to be raining. Right. As we head into the weekend, the rain chances, Bridget, will be going back up. It's about a 60 to 70% tropics as of now we are watching a couple tropical waves one might actually add a little more moisture to the forecast early next week for us here in central florida not a washout but something we are watching but for the most part though our tropics are looking nice and the q word i just don't like saying the q word because <laughs> i end up jinxing myself even though i know that's really not real 103 to 107 will be our heat indices for today so still running below any heat advisory concerns but as we take you here hour by hour your coverage for today is up to about a 40 to 50 percent depending on where you are yesterday was like a 20 to 40 percent so a little more widespread with the main focus being along i4 so let me show you here clouds and rain forecast we're still dry for the next few hours if you want to take a little run or a jog outside besides it being hot and humid you're not having to contend with any rain then we will start seeing models picking up some of those scattered showers, pushing in along the east and west coast. Could see a couple scattered showers along 95. And then that collision again, once again, happening a little further towards the east compared to yesterday. So yesterday it was more towards Marion, Lake County. This is going to be more of an orange seminal focus. Again, that's the focus. Doesn't mean that's the only spot that will be seeing the rain. Quick look at the tropics. We are not watching anything significant out there as of now. We do have tons of Saharan dust that is kind of wrapping around that big Bermuda high that you see uh, a big one just kind of taking over the Atlantic. That Saharan dust as of now models are in agreement that a lot of that Saharan dust will start to transfer into central Florida by about Saturday afternoon and into Sunday could be dense at times. So with that being said, could be impacting our air quality just a little bit, but also really bringing back those vibrant sunrises and sunsets. Don't forget to pin it. We would love to see them. They're also just great photos to share. So we would love to use them on air and online. And that's really going to be a Saturday and Sunday play. And tied in with some of that Saharan dust, we might actually get some tropical moisture back into the forecast come Monday and Tuesday, which is why rain chances will stay elevated at about a 70%. So again, today, Drain chances are lower. They're just not out of the picture. And they're not going to be out of the picture throughout the rest of the, the next couple of months. Raining season is here. And it's really very easy to develop scattered showers. So mm -hmm. that's what we're looking like, Bridget. And it's always good to just, you know, keep your app updated. Check the radar for mm -hmm. wherever you're going to be. Look a little bit ahead and see what's going yes. on. That way you can. Yeah, and we do, we do have that new update to our weather app. So all the data that's being sent out to the old version of the app will be discontinued this Friday. So if you, if you're one that likes to drag your feet on the updates, I get it. I'm one of those. I don't like change. So I never update my, my phone and my apps very often. Um, but this one you will want to update just because that information and the data and the notifications and stuff will not be going out to those old mm -hmm. um, versions starting Friday. I, I like the play function on the radar mm -hmm. map now. I feel like yes. it's, it's a little bit easier to see what's going on at yeah. the moment and then what it could look like, you know, in an hour or two. Yeah. Now, listen, at the end of the day, I know there's a lot of folks who don't like the new updates. We know. We hear you. We can't answer all the emails <laughs> and, and notifications. We are working with the app developers. This is something that... Mm -hmm. I didn't change when I became chief. I can guarantee you that was already in the works months ago. Um, but it is something that we're working with the app developers. This is a company wide change. All of our sister stations are also changing. So it was not something that was started up by me. I know there's some people who say, well, you became chief and then the app changed. I'm like, mm, oh. that's just a bad coincidence. Um, but we are working on it again, ironing out a lot of the kinks. So there might be some new updates to fix some of those bugs that, that we do have in the app right now. But at the end of the day, it's still a really good app. Mm -hmm. It's just, there's just a couple little things here and there that I know needs to get ironed out. I, I haven't had them. a chance to sink my teeth into it. So I'm, I'll talk mm -hmm. to you more about that later, but the radar yeah. is still great. Like the radar, it is, it is. still tap it, zoom in, set, set it to know where your location is. That's boom, all you need to know. Yeah. 
Yeah, they, and that really at the end of the day is what everyone wants to know right now. So that is that is still a great function. You can add all different overlays as well, including severe thunderstorm You can use warnings, it out of town too. Lightning, exactly. That too. It's nice. Well, thanks, Candace. I did not. I did not change the app. Let me just lay that out there for anybody who who thinks that. You got enough to do. You're not making I do. apps. <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Candace. Bye. See you in a bit. All right, we're going to check in with Trooper Steve already rolling, rolling, rolling. And uh, he and I were rolling down Lee Road this morning in the dark, and there were just, like, no lights on. I think he looks frozen, but hopefully he is still. Oh, there he is. There he is. All right, now I'm that, here. Now that the sun is up, I bet the lights are back on on Lee Road, hopefully. Well, surprising, surprising. Lee Road's back up and going. Um, we do have frozen still or can you hear me you're back this is going to be interesting i think i'm in a dead spot uh up here i4 close to 44 so the signal might not be the best uh lee road is back in business the lights are flashing um they're functioning again bridget's right we drove in it was awkwardly dark when you uh hit i4 and lee road this morning but uh, a crash kind of hit one of the electrical boxes and uh, really shut things down but we had no issues outside of that and it is back up and going we can actually go to the back right now and i can show you where exactly we were talking morning this was hold on that's not it it is going to be right over here let's take a nice fly over here it's going to be lee road i4 to andenson so andenson light working I-4 Lee, right, uh, Lee Road working. The Good. light right at the entrance to Home Depot, uh, Diplomat Circle is flashing red. So drivers just oh. need to make sure they can make their complete stop as they're sitting out there. Uh, your drive times towards the airport, looking good. The only one, your northeastern directions. Where is that? If you're coming from downtown Kissimmee, headed to Simpson Road, it's gonna take you about 30 minutes to get out towards the airport this morning. Brevard County, you guys are looking good. Minor crash out along 520 this morning, east of Rockledge, almost to A1A, but nothing that's gonna slow you down. We come over here a little bit more towards the Cape, nice and clear this morning. No major problems other than the Andenson stuff. We saw some westbound delays this morning out in Central Seminole Deltona, you're experiencing them right now. And then down here, Pine Hills, morning, Coe, Florida Turnpike, even 429. Not as bad. I almost thought today was Friday when hmm. I was looking at the traffic out there. Sand Lake and Kirkman uh, looking good. And then the routine slowed out by our attractions as you're headed eastbound from 27 Polk County into Kissimmee. Uh, Bridget, today, 10 a.m. stream, I'm going to be driving up to State Road 44. We're going to, there we go, I'm back. Am I back? I'm mm -hmm. back. Uh, 44 east and westbound. And uh, talking about no passing zones, and when you hit an obstruction in a no passing zone, how to properly go around said uh, obstruction. And, and I will define obstruction in today's stream. Mm. So that will be pretty cool. Uh, nice, easy, 10 o'clock, clickorlando.com. Yesterday, I got to meet all these amazing small businesses mm -hmm. over at the Sanford Chamber of Commerce. And they nice. were, they're avid new six watchers. They were like, oh, tell Bridget I said hi. Oh my gosh, you work with Crystal. And we're so happy about Chief and her promotion. It was really cool. And probably 40 different businesses there. I'd say 80% were watching us, hence why we visited Sanford when WKFG hits the road. So that was really cool, Bridget. Nice. That's great. Well, good to hear that. And I'm interested in this whole how to go around an obstruction issue because I know there have been so many times where you just have to brace yourself, but you just got to stick it case, out yeah. sometimes. All right. Yep. All right. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. So this morning is, is a somber one across central Florida, the, the community mourning the loss of Pat Williams, who is an integral figure in bringing the Orlando magic here in the 80s and, of course, a pillar in the community, um, leaving behind a beautiful legacy, of course, but lots of thoughts pouring in, reflecting on the man who is the magic man here in Orlando now passing away. And New Six's Ezzy Castro has more on not only a co-founder, but a fixture in our community. Orlando Magic co-founder, Hall of Famer, and sports legend Pat Williams has died. The 84-year-old is well known for bringing the Orlando Magic and professional sports to Central Florida. 
It was in 1986 when Williams, along with local businessman Jimmy Hewitt, began the process of bringing an NBA team to Orlando. Williams spoke to News 6 anchor Justin Warmoth about that last year during an episode of The Weekly. It was not black magic or magician's magic. Mm -hmm. It was the magic of Orlando. Sunshine, mm -hmm. golf courses, orange juice, uh, spring training. Mm -hmm. Orlando Magic Chairman Dan DeVos and CEO Alex Martins released a statement last night that reads in part, we all owe him a debt of gratitude and he will certainly be missed but never forgotten. And the Williams family also released a statement describing his passion for the city, saying, quote, he loved Orlando and will forever be etched into the heart of who we are. And so we'll keep you posted on, you know, all of the statements coming in and all the great memories of Pat Williams. Um, of course, you know, our thoughts go out to his family and loved ones this morning. Now we want to go to a recap of night three of the RNC. Uh, we heard from the vice presidential nominee uh, for former President Trump, uh, and he got up there, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, and talked about who he is and what they would like to do if their administration is able to get into the White House. News 6's Mark Lehman explains what he told the crowd last night in Milwaukee. Ohio Senator J.D. Vance taking the stage last night where he accepted the Republican vice presidential nomination with former President Trump looking on. Mr. President, I will never take for granted the trust you have put in me. In his first speech as nominee, Vance highlighted his personal story. I grew up in Middletown, Ohio, a small town where people spoke their minds built with their hands, and loved their God, their family, their community, and their country with their whole hearts. The 39-year-old former Marine first rose to national prominence with his best-selling memoir, Hillbilly Elegy. He spoke about what he'll bring to the GOP ticket. I will give you everything I have to serve you and to make this country a place where every dream you have for yourself, your family, and your country will be possible once again. The speech capping a day that focused on national security and foreign policy. Florida was represented by Congressman Matt Gates, who rallied delegates behind the Republican nominees. We are on a mission to rescue and save this country, and we ride or die with Donald John Trump to the end. You know, Kathleen and I were just talking about how the movie based on his book is trending on Vance's book Hillbilly Elegy is trending on Netflix right now uh, it came out a while back but uh, of course that movie Glenn Close Amy Adams in that movie and it's uh, up on Netflix so that's that's what that's linked to if you've been noticing that on your Netflix menu Mount Dora traffic so we've been talking about how these uh, cameras are going up in different places for different reasons but if you've been to Mount Dora you know that it gets busy out there especially in the downtown area so all the traffic and pedestrians crossing have raised some safety concerns now and the police are launching a new traffic unit specifically to get results with the uptick in their traffic. So New Six's Emily McLeod went out to Mount Dora and got a chance to ride along and see how they are working to put the brakes on these traffic troubles. So it's okay. Don't, don't say sorry. It happens, right? Yes, sir. We're out here to educate. Officer Colin Hardy works in the Mount Dora Police Department's new traffic unit. The reason for the stop today, the stop sign on 7th and Donnelly, you have to come to a full complete stop behind the stop bar. Now we were able to go on a ride along with Mount Dora's new traffic unit and we were there when they made a traffic stop. So the initial violation, she rolled over the stop bar. So running a stop sign is basically what the statute states. And while we were on the ride along with the Mount Dora traffic unit, they ended up writing another citation when somebody ran a stop sign. I didn't realize how bad it was, but we have a lot of a lot of violations, especially in the main part of downtown. And that's pretty bad considering we have a ton of foot traffic. Since June 10th, the Mount Dora Traffic Unit has conducted 340 traffic stops, issued 100 traffic citations, and made 10 physical arrests. Were you surprised by the numbers that you all got back? Yes, because with this unit, it allows us to focus specifically on those problem areas in the city. And we get anything from, you know, from your typical traffic, traffic stop, from, you know, speeding, etc. We also get guns and drugs. While working the traffic unit, Officer Kyle Morrison made a traffic stop which ultimately ended with an arrest and a search of the driver's car. 
Morrison says they found a gun, drugs, a drum magazine, and other magazines. Like, you never know what they have in that vehicle. So you have to always be conscious of what you're dealing with when you're out there on the road. Do you see the traffic unit expanding? Absolutely. Um, our city is growing tremendously, and instead of having two officers, I think we need to have three or more. Um, the amount of calls that we're getting for the complaints is just, it's almost too much because we're constantly addressing multiple different areas within the city. So, yes, absolutely. In Mount Dora, Emily McLeod, Getting Results, News 6. You know, I was just talking about the Hillbilly LG movie, and now we're going to talk about Fly Me to the Moon. Have you watched that yet? Well, it is uh, based on, of course, space, and they use Kennedy Space Center as a backdrop for the movie set, and it's, you know, it's a hot spot for a lot of things. You know, rocket launches, and Hollywood apparently also likes to use the Space Coast for filming movies, so Fly Me to the Moon actually did a lot there and new six morning anchor and insider guy Crystal Moyer got a look at some of the spots featured in the film that you're sure to recognize from behind the scenes. Hey, I'm your New Six anchor and insider guide, Crystal Moyer, here at the Kennedy Space Center's Visitors Complex, where it played set to a movie that's out right now in theaters, Fly Me to the Moon. I'm right outside of the Apollo Saturn V Center, and it houses all of the artifacts from the Apollo missions used in the film. Including the Astro Van that was actually used to transport astronauts to the launch pad in the 60s. And the movie company said, we want to use that. They went and borrowed it from the Visitor Complex, took it out there, but it doesn't have an engine. So they had a bunch of people with ropes, like pulling it <laughs> as it looks like it's driving. Daryl Nail is a NASA launch commentator and had the unique opportunity of escorting comedian Ray Romano and his family on set about a year ago, sharing these photos. It was funny. I, I asked him, like, what role are you playing in this movie? And he's like, I'm, I'm like an assistant flight director. He's like, I don't know anything about space. He's just so down to earth, though. So you take him around to a different spot and he was just like anybody else seeing something for the first time, you know, the crawler transporter. He's like, wow, look at that. That's amazing. Kids, come over here. Let's get a picture. Fly Me to the Moon is a rom-com drama film about a romance between characters played by Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum surrounding NASA's historic Apollo 11 moon landing. Nail says the movie, while fiction, incorporates many historic moments and landmarks from Kennedy Space Center. One of the scenes, they feature the rocket garden here. Yeah, that was a cool scene. And what they did was they brought a LIDAR scanner, they set it up, and this thing meticulously scanned all of this rocket garden here. And then they took this entire scene and they put it right next to the VAB. You see movie vans traveling down the road and um, in your news, some vehicles probably had some stars in them, so it was, it was an exciting time. KSC Visitor Complex COO Theron Protzi says it took a lot of coordination with 200 production staff members and hundreds of extras for some scenes. How do you feel about watching this movie back, and do you have a sense of pride? Yeah, pride is an understatement. I mean, we're on hollowed ground. I mean, some amazing engineering, uh, the women and men that have made the space program and what it is today and what it was from Apollo. I mean, that was the genesis, right? Here's another snapshot from the set showing some more movie magic. They used real footage for the moon landing, mm -hmm. but they used a fake moon for the moonlight, <laughs> which was kind of hilarious. The fake moon was this gigantic LED panel that was suspended from a 300 foot crane. I posted more photos from the set of Fly Me to the Moon in the article on clickorlando.com slash insider. While you're there, you can enter to win a family four pack of tickets to Kennedy Space Center's Visitors Complex. From Brevard County, Crystal Moyer, Getting Results, News 6. Very cool stuff right there. So check it out and check out the movie too. And we want to tell you about that ticket giveaway. Of course, she mentioned it. Go to clickorlando.com go to Insider or Contest, and you can enter to win that four pack of tickets to the Visitor Center. Um, it's amazing. You can spend the whole day there. I was able to go a few weeks back when I had some time off and take the kids, and there's just so much to do, so much to see, and it's a, it's a nice day out there at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. So go in there, enter to win that four pack, and go check it out. And we also want to tell you about crash tests. Uh, this is from CBS. Chris Van Cleve has more on some recent crash tests and how some of these sensors that help you avoid crashes aren't working so well when it comes to the, the rear end of the vehicle. The latest test from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety looks at how small SUVs handle the potential dangers of a parking lot. 
the new research focuses on avoiding obstacles while backing up. These are not the dramatic accidents, but these are the ones that people are more likely to have. Yeah, absolutely. When you look at insurance claims, they're dominated by these low-speed type of crashes. David Ayler and his team at IIHS tested eight small SUVs to see how the Automatic Emergency Braking System, or AEB, performed in a series of scenarios. The Ford Escape consistently avoided collisions and was given the top rating of superior, along with three other vehicles that stopped during most of the tests. We see that vehicles with rear cameras, parking sensors, and rear AEB uh, are reducing police reported crashes uh, by almost 80 percent. Three SUVs received a lower advanced rating because they did not slow significantly when backing up at certain angles, while the Hyundai Tucson received the lowest rating of basic. Because it was unable to avoid any of the uh, backing crashes that we evaluate. In a statement, Hyundai says we are currently evaluating the results. The company also points out the Tucson previously received an IIHS top safety pick for overall performance. The Institute says only about one in four new cars come standard with automatic rear braking. I mean, is this technology that should be standard on most vehicles? So we think this technology is highly effective um, and we would like to see it as standard equipment. Ehler says in 2022, nearly a third of insurance claims were rear collisions. Costly crashes, technology may be able to help you avoid. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Phoenix. I want to tell you about something happening at Dizzy. You know, we just talked about how uh, Tiana's Bayou Adventure opened up in the now renovated Splash Mountain, which is now the Princess and the Frog ride. But Country Bear Jamboree is back better than ever and still country and cool. The bears are back and it's a brand new show with some updated country fied songs like Try Everything You Hear There from Zootopia and A Whole New World. And you know, they have bear necessities, but theme park expert Haley Coombs has a preview. You can check that out on clickorlando.com slash theme parks. A nice place to hang out and get some air conditioning when you get caught in the heat and the rain at Magic Kingdom. That's going to do it for us. I'll see you at noon for News 6 at noon. And up next here on News 6 Plus Weather Wise with meteorologist John McKegas. Take care.